Hello. Okay, it works. Thank you for the great intro, Leah. Uh, all right, so thank you for joining my talk today. Um, well, the talk was inspired by, well, our adventures, my adventures, including uh, myself, but mostly of my colleagues working, well, where I work. I work at Google, Google Cloud, on Cloud Composer. So some of you might have learned that Cloud Composer is a managed airflow running on Google Cloud. Uh, as a part of our experience, well, we support our customers. And one of the reasons we want to use uh, Composer and Airflow, they want to run the workloads reliably. By reliably, we usually mean that, well, they don't break, or they don't break in the situations where, well, that are either unexpected or expensive. Um, yeah, so I will touch base on some of the cases that we have observed, how to circumvent it, how to, well, somehow mitigate it, and sometime, sometimes it's not possible, but perhaps we will work it out. Now, maybe I have trimmed down the messaging, so misconception <laughs> has been reshaped to a lesson, right? So let's think of it as a lesson, right? So how we can actually do better uh, in some cases, right? So lesson one, uh, can always run uh, Apache Airflow uh, task in a reliable manner, right? So, so from this lesson, we can say that unfortunately, not always, um, because there are certain reasons, aspects, when, well, it's not in your control. The reasons, uh, well, for the purpose of this presentation, I divided it into two sections, right? One, are, one, some of them are external, right? You have no control over. Well, things can go south due to, well, infrastructure failures such as, uh, well, disk malfunction. Uh, someone can cut the cable. <laughs> someone can, well, kick your server. Uh, well, it could be network connectivity, network contention, whatnot. So, yeah, it, it happens, right? So you need to be prepared for that, right? So it's a kind of, this is how a cloud works, right? You should prepare for the unexpected rather than expect that nothing is going to happen. And secondly, which is also very interesting, and this is something you have control over, you can prepare for that. Uh, and actually, well, some of the focus of this presentation will be on the second part, which is, well, intrinsic to, to our setup. It's your code, your setup. Uh, we can say that it's also Airflow itself, how it works. And our actions, right? So our action could be, well, <laughs> drop database table. From lesson one, uh, so Airflow is a distributed system. Uh, so we need to learn how to use the redundancy in a correct manner to actually help us with those uh, issues. Well, with those challenges of running tasks in a reliable manner. So, does redundant mean that, well, problem solved? Unfortunately, well, not always, because there are certain uh, single point of failures. Network, well, one of the most obvious one, you have no control over. Uh, seller worker, so that could be somehow, well, surprising, uh, because when you think of uh, a task running on Airflow, uh, comparing it to other solutions, such as, for instance, Spark, Spark can distribute your workload across a cluster. And this has the capability of, well, resuming work because of the built-in redundancy for a single work. That doesn't happen in Airflow. Usually a task is a process in salary worker. Therefore, uh, a failure to uh, the worker is practically crushing the task. Even though you, have, you can have hundreds of workers, doesn't matter. Your task is going to fail. Uh, and uh, actually, more than that, that I will touch base on later in this presentation. But well, the redundancy, well, the bottom line, redundancy of the worker is not helping for your particular task. It's helping for the perhaps the whole Airflow installation. Well, and there's also the bigger part of it is the Airflow metadata database. Uh, it's, well, should be considered actually as a single point of failure. It's a relational database. Uh, by now, I think you already know the CAP theorem. Uh, from this theorem, you, you will learn that availability of the database is one of the trade-offs for the relational databases, right? So there are certain aspects of the <clears throat> solutions such as MySQL and Postgres, well, that you need to accept. 
So what about the redundancy? Where it can help? Well, so it can help when your component is either stateless, in general, or it can recover from, from a failure. Uh, well, so in case of Cloud Composer, typically, process failures leads to instance task failure. There are some exceptions. Some operators, some tasks, can resume the work, but most of them are stateful. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. When you have a task that executes a process, like a, execute a Spark job, when this task fails, you practically need to retry, which starts the process on Spark again, right? So, so it's, it's, the state is gone, right? Because the task ID was in this task uh, memory, unless you used a deferable, which I will actually refer to later. Actually, it's in the next statement also. So because using deferability, uh, the state is uh, serialized in a flow metadata database. So that's why actually deferability is an important feature, very important feature actually, of uh, running uh, reliable tasks, tasks reliably in Apache Airflow. Uh, you can also alleviate this problem by retries, but retries is a great feature that works great for some tasks, maybe majority of the tasks, but we, do, we, do, we have also learned that some customers actually don't accept this solution. Uh, for instance, they run TensorFlow jobs that run for hours, which is expensive to retry, especially if those tasks run, for instance, on a Kubernetes spot that has 96 CPUs, half, half terabyte of RAM, uh, retry is expensive. So lesson three, how can you improve availability of the metadata database? And actually this is uh, the bigger chunk of, of, of the problem. Uh, so database, in general, uh, failures happen. Why? Uh, so first of all, one of the bigger problems we have observed for, for our customers is that too many tasks uh, is a problem to database, right? Because um, going into details a little bit, every task uh, that you run, actually every um, process that runs in, uh, in Airflow, uh, no matter if it's scheduler, if it's worker, if it's one particular task running, running either on Kubernetes executor, running on Celer executor, is based on something called a, a class called local base job, if I'm not mistaken by the name. Uh, and when you see the code inside this class, you will see a method called heartbeat. And this heartbeat is executing every several seconds, I think it's 30 seconds by default, a call to database. So when you run on your perfectly configured cluster um, 1,000 tasks, you are DDoSing the solution. Uh, and another aspect of it is that uh, if a process fails to run the heartbeat, after a while, it's going to be killed. So practically, you're losing all the processes because they are going to be restarted, which means all the tasks that we're running, perhaps 1,000 of them, will be killed. So that's why actually database failures is, uh, well, quite unpleasant thing that could happen to reliability of your um, Airflow instance. Sensors is another thing that actually has um, this negative impact on the database reliability, availability actually in the uh, reliability, uh, because sensors usually, some sensors, which has been observed in our customers clusters, uh, query the database. What is the status of the task? And each such query sent, for instance, every 30 seconds is executing another uh, request that could be DDoSing, right? So we observe some customers who have hundreds of sensors not being um, fully aware that that is practically DDoSing the whole cluster. Badly written tags, also another case that can um, have a negative impact on the availability of the database. Uh, you may be also aware that for instance, variable get operation is executing a query to database every time. And if you use, which is actually part of the documentation, variable get operation in the main body of your DAG, not in a task, during each parsing, uh, each parsing cycle, it will get uh, this value from the database. 
again, perhaps not DDoSing, but overwhelming the database as well. Hardware failures that can also reduce the availability of the database. And again, for each of such situations, uh, the effects, the impact uh, blast radius, each quest is quite massive, right? Because then all processes that were running in your airflow well, cease to exist. Some countermeasures. Well, for task, too many tasks, well, you have some. Well, you can scale up the database to have more power. Uh, you can defer, and actually, very recommended method, because deferability has one very nice aspect. It doesn't, uh, tasks running in deferable mode no longer uh, inherit from local base job. Only trigger it does. Therefore, you can run 100 tasks on trigger, and they don't heartbeat the database. It's massive, actually, reduction and uh, improvement. Uh, you can limit the parallels. Again, to reduce this chance of DDoSing and, chance, and change schedule, right? So flatten uh, the curve. Uh, for, the, for the sensors, uh, well, some, some simple methods like increase interval, uh, again, defer, because sensors are operators, right? So, so run them in deferable mode or change the architecture. Like, for instance, instead of pull, use the push. Uh, have a, some kind of uh, aggregation instead of running 100 sensors, perhaps you, you can have one and get uh, subsequent task. Um, for badly written tasks, uh, use, well, be aware, right, that variable get is not a cheap operation. Uh, but also, you also find in the Airflow documentation that you have Jinja templates that actually delay the time when the variable uh, query is being executed. And also, uh, well, there was a talk today about a um, new feature coming to Airflow 2.7, if I'm not mistaken, about caching the variable, uh, variables, which will be also another uh, addition. And for database failures in general, use highly available, available database and many Airflow instances, even if it's, well, self-hosted. Uh, in case of Composer, we also offer this ability to run database in high available manner. But watch out regarding the scaling. Database scaling, well, it's not free lunch, unfortunately, right? So first of all, more DB resources will give more fun. Of course, you can run bigger loads, but bigger loads means, means more data. More data is a headache. Uh, there is DB cleanup job, so mind that, right? But for if you don't mind it, actually, you fall into certain issues. One of them, will longer maintenance. So when you upgrade, your airflow, for instance, you want to, to seven version, we has the great improvements. For every upgrade, you need to run uh, migration scripts. We have learned that some customers have some significant databases, like, I don't know, half of terabyte. Running a migration script for half terabyte of data, well, means availability is going down for a couple of hours. Uh, I think, uh, and there's one more thing, well, cost. There is a cost of running this database, there is cost also data, uh, whatnot. More effective solutions to this problem? Well, run the schedules task, uh, schedules more evenly. So I have mentioned the parallels, which is the natural way, because, well, it does it for you, but you can also affect the schedule uh, of your tasks. So, well, don't expect that you, when you have 10,000 tasks, to run them all at once at midnight. It's not, not just going to work, right? Because you are going to be DDoSing your solution. Uh, spread loads across multiple instances is also a great solution, right? Again, for the same reason. I've, talk, uh, I've told you about variables, Jinja templates, highly available databases. So basically, this is the summary of the solutions you can have And lesson four. Well, can my can I make sure that Python code runs uninterrupted, right? Because it's a simple Python code. Uh, well, I wish it was the true, but for those reasons, unfortunately, there are some, some uh, gotchas, right? So, uh, especially in case of Celery, which is quite, pop quite popular, right? But it has some, well, I would say, trade-offs. It's quick to run uh, a task on, tr on Celery. It, it just runs, if you are not familiar with Celery, the way it works, uh, a Celery worker has ability to start your task as a sub-process 
on the same machine with Celery Worker. Therefore, if you are running 10 tasks, each of them is another Python interpreter running on a single machine. Right, so 10 tasks means 10, 10 processes. Well, usually it works, right? And it's great, right? Because starting a process is quick. But if, well, some of those processes, for instance, start running TensorFlow and crunching 10 gigabytes of data, well, it's very likely that other processes, along with this one, will fail. <clears throat> because, for instance, memory uh, is insufficient. That's one of the reasons. Uh, so chat neighbor, in general. Uh, maintenance operations on VM, it's a cloud also, right? So things can happen. Well, you want your VMs to be secure, and according to my information, there is no safe way of upgrading, for instance, uh, Linux kernel without restarting the Linux. Uh, database can be overwhelmed, which I've told you about. So I will return to this here. When a salary worker fails to send a heartbeat, it's going to be restarted you can imagine what happens with all the processes that were started by the salary worker. It's gone. Uh, ah, sorry. Network latency. Again, it can actually also impact the heart beating, killing the process, of course. Uh, and dependent services failure, right? It's also something that can affect your tasks. Like, but that, that's something, well, the most obvious, right? So if you start, want to start something on Spark, Spark is gone, your task is gone. So, well, uh, leading to quick summary. How, how can you mitigate some of those actions? Well, instead of using salary, another trade-off, again, it's a trade-off, right? So it's not perfect solution, right? Because salary has certain benefits. But if you want to run your task, uh, reliability is your, I would say, key factor. Kubernetes is a better option because it isolates the tasks. So, well, you have better chance of not, well, running it next to a chatty neighbor. Uh, Overloading database should be in the first place. Because whatever you do, if the database is gone, everything is gone, uh, you can start fresh. The Therable mode is a great option. Because even if the database fails, the Therability is actually your only option to recover. You can restart the whole cluster. When it goes back, uh, the task state will be resumed from the database. And if you have wrong running tasks, you cannot run the throuble. Uh, the only way actually you can make some kind of certainty that it's going to continue is to plan your maintenance windows. That's also possible on many cloud solutions and also in your own network on clusters. And one last thing to remember about. Uh, so I presented some of the options you have. Uh, but well, sometimes, well, comes something, well, <laughs> that is not predictable, uh, that can actually break everything and, well, put your cluster on fire. Uh, that could be, for instance, database drop table kind of thing, right? Uh, then you need to have a plan. So something that people tend to forget to have a disaster recovery plan. Uh, yeah. So that's very quick summary of the well journeys we have while running uh, airflow at scale thank you